CC Drizzle is an effect that you can find under the simulation category. It's one of those effects that just does one thing, but it does it really well and it gives you a good number of options on how to customize it. So let's apply it to this image here. You can see that it instantly just adds these ripples all around the photo. And if I play it back, it is animated and it looks pretty nice but we have access to a lot of settings. So the drip rates defaulted to one. If we want a lot of drizzle, we can increase that number. If we want a lot less, we could drop it down to 0.25. So that's how we can control how many drops are actually happening. The next value is longevity in seconds. It's currently set to one second per drizzle. I could change that to five seconds per drizzle and they're gonna last a whole lot longer. Or I could go the other way, same as the drip rate. I could change that to 0.25 and the ripples appear and disappear very quickly. I'll reset that and move on to rippling. If I pause the video for a second and then just change the angle, you can see that that's adding more or less rippling. Let's focus on this one right here. I'll reset it back to the default. If I increase this, it's going to add more ripples. If I decrease it, it will have far less. Then we have displacement, which just basically shows how defined each one of these ripples are. So again, resetting it to default, let's focus on this one that overlaps the boat and I'll increase the displacement. You can see that it basically makes the ripples look much deeper or more defined. You can also change the ripple height, which also allows you to control the definition of those ripples. And we can adjust the spreading, which basically controls the size of the ripples. So we can make them really big, turn that displacement down, turn the ripple height down, maybe even turn the rippling down so there isn't quite so many, but using that spreading, we can really push those ripples out. And then finally we have light and shading and these give us a whole lot of options. By default, this effect is using the effect light, meaning the light generated by this effect, and it gives us options for what that light is. So currently the light intensity is set to 100, but I could turn that down so it's not so extreme or increase it to make it a lot brighter. We can change the color so that maybe it matched that a little bit more, or maybe we want it to look like it's reflecting the sky a little bit. We can change the light type from distant light to point light, and that will allow us to control where this light is with the point control. The light height value is going to change basically the angle of the light. So a lower value, you can think of that light as kind of being lower on the horizon, angled downwards, and a higher value all the way up to 100 is a light that's pointed directly down straight from above, giving much more uniform light. And that works with both distant light and point light. But when we have the light type set to distant light, then we can change the light direction to whatever we want. So we can control where that light source is coming from. If you think of it like the sun, it's basically what direction is east or west. And the light height is how high the sun is in the sky. With point light, the light source is coming from the point and the height determines how close or far away that light is from the ripples. Let's reset that one more time and then go down to the shading category. And this is where you can control how these ripples are being shaded. And you'll see this set of controls through a lot of the effects in After Effects. They just control how the effect is being lit. So you can control the ambient light, diffuse light, specular, roughness, and metal, and these are all properties that are generally found with 3D programs, and since this is a simulation of 3D ripples, that's why we're finding them here. Now, if we go back into light and change this from using effect light to AE lights, that means that this effect is now going to interact with After Effects lights. This little 3D cube right here is our indicator that this will work with objects in 3D. So if I go up to Layer, New, Light, and I make a new point light, and click OK, you can see that now that is following wherever this light goes. If I move it closer or further away, it's going to base the lighting on the location of that light rather than using the effect light properties. If I change the intensity of that light, the effect will respect that. And you see that this all got a lot darker. That's because I'm lighting my entire scene with just one point light. But if I add a new light and change it to ambient and maybe set the intensity down to 50, click OK, that's gonna fill in a lot of that darkness. And I can adjust the intensity to however I like it. And all of those shading properties are still available even using the After Effects lights. And that's CC Drizzle.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.